Hello, and welcome back to another week of Fishwick and Associates webisode. This week, our founder and boss, John Fishwick, is going to talk about arbitration. So with that said, because I can barely pronounce the word, John, I'm going to turn it over to you. I know you're interested to learn more about arbitration, Zach. <laughs> we hope some of our viewers are. Uh, I see that our host with the most is here hosting us this week. I see Judge Daniel out there. He's in virtual mode this week. He did have a court appearance this week, though. We know that because we, Carol and I went with Daniel to court on a case that involves this very issue. And so that's what we thought we'd talk about. But before you start, John, what does that mean that you all went to court? It means that, what do you mean? <laughs> we went to court, not to arbitration. <laughs> and we give to our food bank charity. Exactly. Thank you very much for reminding that. We have tabulated up at the end of the month. I wasn't thinking ahead like you are, Zach. And so we had a court appearance this week. That means Southwest Food uh, Harvest, Southwest people who don't have food are going to get some food because we're going to make a contribution. Outstanding. Uh, and, and that's important. And we feel very good about that. This week we happen to win in court, but win, lose, or draw, we go to court, whether online or in person, we're going to make a contribution <laughs> and we have them up at the end of the month. And like I said before, We've got a bunch in September. So, Zach, thank you for reminding us of that. So, Daniel did go out of virtual mode. We had a court hearing uh, this this week with a judge. And one of the issues, Zach, uh, in that case was there was some paperwork that our client signed in a personal injury case. And the question was, did that paperwork mean that the case had to be decided in arbitration by hmm. an arbitrator, or would it stay in the circuit court uh, here in Virginia? And so we're, we're usually the plaintiff and we're representing the underdog and we want to be in court. You know, we like juries, we like judges, we like the public court system. And so we're big fans of the public court system. So most of the time, if there's an arbitration clause, we're going to uh, resist it. Uh, and that's what we did in this case. Uh, and uh, we had success on resisting it. Um, and so uh, it means the case will go forward, whether it's in an arbitration or in a court. And if it has to go to arbitration, we're good with that too. But generally speaking, when we represent plaintiffs, we, we very much prefer the court system. And so these decisions, Daniel, come down to kind of very technical thing. A judge, a circuit judge in this case, could be a federal judge. He or she has to decide, look at the paperwork, you know, did, should the case go to what's called an arbitration, the KB the case be stayed, stopped while the arbitration goes forward? Or does the judge say, no, we're gonna let this case stay here in my court uh, and we'll just move forward. And that's what happened in the case we had this week where the, the arbitration was denied. And so we're gonna go forward in, in our case in state court. But what are some of the things that a judge looks at? Judge Daniel, you're the judge. One of these arbitration agreement comes in front of you. What are some of the things that you look at making that decision? Right, so where the issue is uh, arbitrability, which is another favorite word of Zach's, uh, arbitrability. Uh, so when that's the issue, the judge will typically have to decide that issue. and you know, they'll look at a lot of factors. They'll look at, you know, you know, look the language of the agreement, they'll look how conspicuous and obvious the agreement is, if it's something that, you know, the the document plainly says this is the arbitration agreement, or if it's kind of tucked away in the middle of, you know, a packet of documents and you're not really sure what it's talking about, and you kind of have to read the fine print to even understand that it is an arbitration agreement, because an arbitration agreement is very serious. You're essentially waving array waving away certain legal rights, you know, if it's found enforceable, you're waving away a lot of legal rights, you're, you know, um, oftentimes in arbitration agreements, they'll say that the losing side has to pay the fees and costs for the winning side, which, you know, we always hope to win and we fight to win, but, you know, that could, that's a, a risk that some plaintiffs won't be willing to take. And so that's one factor that the court will look at. Another one is whether the parties have signed the agreement, who signed the agreement, whether, signing the agreement is something that's been contemplated by the parties, whether that's a requirement. And, you know, a, a kind of overarching factor is whether the agreement is really conscionable, whether, you know, it's, it's fundamentally fair to enforce this kind of agreement against a, a party who's typically not in a position of power to negotiate the agreement. They they're kind of just presented that and they're told to sign it. And, you know, they do that because they, they don't really have any other option. Right. So a lot of times, Daniel, people sign documents that they don't pay much attention to. Uh, they could do it on a DocuSign or they could do it personally. And, and so we review those very carefully. Uh, and this week, you know, Carol Ching argued this case for us. Carol did a fantastic job, as she always does, and kind of 
you know, shut the other side down as she typically does. Carol has been on the show once. I'm not sure if we're going to get her back on here anytime <laughs> soon, but I think the viewers would certainly like to hear from Carol. I uh, believe so. You know, and so maybe we'll get a get a few more views this week and they'll start a little groundswell on that. Of course, there's still a lot of people waiting to hear from, you know, a paralegal Amy Guthrie, and I don't that think it, that hasn't happened, but Carol did a great job. And I think what's important in these cases, we do a, it, it's, it, it's, it's more tedious work. It's incredibly important work. And I think one of the strengths of our firm is we write really well. And I think judges respect what we write. And it's also the arguments you say in court, but a lot of it is uh, the work we do is written work. It's, you know, why our side should win. And we try to be, you know, honest with courts and frank about what the facts are, but hopefully we have credibility. I think we do. Uh, we certainly strive for that so that they really listen to us. And I think in this case, it happened. It doesn't always happen, but I think they always listen to us, even if we win or lose. It's important that, we're, that our clients have a voice. And a lot of that is done through a real team effort, writing uh, and researching to make sure we have the best product going forward. This week, it was to not have an arbitration agreement uh, enforced. We were successful in that effort. But I think you're going to see more and more of that. Large companies have these arbitration agreements. Uh, I think judges, there's been a pattern of kind of enforcing them, but it, it really does. It's a fundamental question, I think, for our country. You know, we have a public court system and how much of it's going to be privatized and how much of it's going to be a, a, a public court system. And there's going to be a push on that back and forth, the different judges doing different things. You know, we as lawyers, we, we Whatever the agreement is, we'll deal with it and address it. And that's what we did in this case. We've got other cases where that's a, an important issue. But I, th I do think this is a cutting edge area of the law. It has been for a little bit of time where people sign documents. And the question is where that case is going to be heard. And we spend a lot of time looking at those, looking at the details that Daniel talked about to make sure we put the best arguments forward for our clients. So it's maybe not the most exciting topic this week, arbitration. Uh, you know, but at the same time, it's real. It's, it's, it's something that's out there. It is a cutting air, cutting edge area of the law. Uh, and whether we go to court for an arbitration or to court, we will count that as a court appearance for our contribution to folks who are hungry out there. And we're going to keep doing that for the next year. So Zach, thank you for leading us today. I think this is an important topic for our viewers and uh, absolutely great to be with you. Well, again, to everybody out there, if you have any questions, please keep them coming and feel free to give us a call. We'd be glad to answer any of the questions. And also, I am the resident crown eater, so I wouldn't most likely answer your question, but we definitely could get, you know, Judge Daniel or the boss man himself on the phone to answer your questions. With that said, we will see you guys next week. Take care. Be safe. Like, subscribe. We'll talk to you again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.